This quarterfinal round game in Class 3A matches the champions of Section 3 with a record of 23 and 7, the Minneapolis Roosevelt Teddies. They will meet the champions of Section 6 with a record of 24 and 5, the Manil St. Margaret's Red Knights. Benilde St. Margaret's will be the home team on the scoreboard. At this time, we'd like to introduce the cheerleaders for Minneapolis Roosevelt. It's a duel of first-timers. More specifically, it's the first time ever Minneapolis Roosevelt has reached the state tournament for girls basketball, and it's also the first time Bedell St. Margaret's has ever earned the one seed. Only one of these teams will move on to the semifinals as Bedell St. Margaret's looks to repeat while Minneapolis Roosevelt hopes to spoil the party. It's the Red Knights and the Teddies in the Clash 3A girls basketball state tournament quarterfinal and it's coming up next live on NSPN. NSPN.TV in partnership with the Minnesota State High School League brings you live coverage of the 2024 state basketball tournament. Coverage is brought to you in part by your local McDonald's owners and operators offering competitive wages, paid time off, and tuition assistance. And by the Star Tribune, your home for the best prep coverage. Now let's go live to the gym for state basketball on NSPN.TV. All the preparation, all the games, the practices, the drills are done. It's time to find out who will claim the Class 3A State Tournament Trophy. And we begin that journey this morning here at the Maturi Pavilion, located at the University of Minnesota. I'm Mike Peden. Glad you could join us live on NSPN. We are just a couple minutes away from the introductions. But if you followed high school girls basketball, you really don't need much of an introduction for Benilde St. Margaret. They are the defending champions. 24-5 and five is their record, but perhaps more importantly and more impressively, they have won 21 in a row, including their section victories in Section 6-3A. And why is that streak important? That 21-game winning streak began January 4th when Olivia Olson returned from a broken hand. And along the way, they racked up victories, including Stewartville and St. Michael Aberville. There's a chance Benilt St. Margaret's could get a rematch with Stewartville, the team they faced last year in the Class 3A state championship. And Olivia Olson, she is one of the unicorns. Class 3A All-State going to an assortment of national All-Star games, including the McDonald's All-American game and the Jordan Brand Classic. She's averaging 24 and a half points, 9.7 rebounds. Where she goes, Benilt St. Margaret's follows. And helping her out, Zahara Bishop, who also got Class 3A All-State honors this year. She helped carry the low while Olson was recovering from surgery. Sydney Friedley, another one. Presley Watkins. This Benel St. Margaret's team has plenty of solid role players. Minneapolis Roosevelt's, they're going to be underdogs here. But they've got a couple of notable names. In Jada Walker and Olivia Wren. They've set all kinds of milestones and records. And we will brief you on that in more detail over the course of this game. But... They were unseated, Drew Benel St. Margaret's, and needless to say, they will be a heavy underdog. A lot would have to go their way, but with single elimination tournaments, you never know. There is always the chance for a surprise, as we saw yesterday with Portland upsetting Gonzaga in the West Coast Conference Championship. Let's go to the floor, and Ken Sargent for the introductions. Teams and starting lineups for the state tournament quarterfinal game between the Minneapolis Roosevelt Teddies and the Benilde St. Margaret Red Knights. First, we'll meet the squad for the visitors. Minneapolis Roosevelt, please step forward as your name is called. 
Student Manager Anna Walker. Reserves number zero, Shasara Works. Number three, sophomore Georgia Levin. Number four, senior Kiara Bell. Number 10, ninth grader Olive Malley. Number 14, senior Jasmine Armstrong. And number 22, sophomore Jay Lang. And now here are the starters for the Teddies. Starting at guard, number one, a 5'2 senior, Tamara Bell. Starting at guard, number two, a 5'2 senior, Jada Walker. Starting at guard, number five, a 5'5 senior, Jayla Bennett. Starting at guard, a 5'8 senior, number 11, Olivia Wren. And starting at forward, a 5'8 senior, number 13, Katie Davis. Assistant coaches for Minneapolis Roosevelt, Michael Walker. And Brandon Strickland. And the head coach for the Teddies is Taisha Wright. Now let's meet the home team, the Benilde St. Margaret Red Knights. Please step forward as your name is called. Student manager, Aspen Franklin. Student manager, Kate Meyer. And here are the reserves for Benilde St. Margaret. Number zero, sophomore Harper Stevenson Schimmick. Number two, eighth grader Zeta Jenkins. Number 10, junior Bella Yacoub. Number 11, junior Bella Stevenson Schimmick. Number 12, ninth grader. Sar Sailor Friedley. Number 14, sophomore Mira Wismer. Number 20, sophomore Sani Guerin. Number 21, ninth grader Ada Parker. Number 22, junior Audrey Pohl. Number 23, sophomore Ellie Porish. Number 25, Junior Ashley Scram. Number 30, Junior Kendall McGee. And number 35, Josie Naji. And now here are the starters for the Red Knights. Starting at guard, a 6'2 senior, number one, Olivia Olson. At guard, a 5'9", ninth grader, number four, Sydney Friedley. At guard, a 5'10", junior, number five, Zahara Bishop. At guard, a 5'9", ninth grader, number 13, Presley Watkins. And at forward, a 5'10 junior, number 33, Kate Kastner. The assistant coaches for Benilde St. Margaret's are Seth Potter and Ajuda Alwal. And the head coach of the Red Knights is Tim Ellison. Our officials for today's game, James Patterson is the referee. The umpires are Tim Andring and Nick Litvin. Fans, at this time, to respect and honor our country, we ask that you please remove your hats and stand for our national anthem. Today, the anthem is being played by the Manil St. Margaret's High School Band under the direction of Josie Gruba.
Benilde St. Margaret's, as they aim to add more history, they've won three state tournament championships in school history, 2006, 2010, and last year. They also will be combating history. Since seeding began in 2007, the one seed in Class 3A has a winning percentage of 313. And Becker knows all about that too well. They were the one seed a year ago. Stewartville knocked them off. But as I say, throw the seeds out the window at this stage. You just got to win three to reach the promised land, the pinnacle, that is the state championship. And for Minneapolis Roosevelt, they've come close. Taisha Wright, the head coach, was a former Roosevelt player. Graduated in 2010. They were surprised by Minnehaha Academy and 4-2A, the Red Hawks, would later go on to win the state championship that year. But Nelt St. Margaret's wins the tip and we're underway. 24 and 5 again, got the one seed. It might surprise you as Olsen pulls up for the elbow J. Sails right, but Benel St. Margaret's had a trailer. Sydney Fridley put a little too much on it. Another offensive rebound. Olivia Olsen knocks down the three. Olivia, not always known for her three point shooting, but she can light it up from there. As I said, one of the unicorns playing in this state tournament. You'll see several of them later this evening in the 2A quarters. That will go to Roosevelt, or stay with Roosevelt. And this is the first time we have a shot clock in the state tournament. As you know, the shot clock was put in place this season. So you won't see as much stalling at the end of games like you used to. As Roosevelt looks to get on the board, and Olivia Wren with a tough drive for the finish. Five double-doubles, all-time leader in points, steals, and assists for the Teddies. The first Minneapolis team to reach the state tournament in 10 years. Olsen with a driving kick. Three on the way. Kapsner buries it. Fidel St. Margaret starting the game with a pair of three-pointers. They lead 6-2. The pressure leads to a steal and an easy bucket for Olivia Olsen. She's got a quick five. The only woman in Fidel St. Margaret's school history to score 2,000 points. Set that mark in her comeback game against Jordan back on January 4th. Roosevelt ball, 16-31 left in the first half. Olsen probably would have passed 2,000 if she didn't break her hand in the first game of the season against Providence Academy. But an illustrious career nonetheless for one of the front runners to win Miss Basketball this season. Roosevelt on the take and stripping it away, I believe, was Bishop. It will stay with Roosevelt, 10 on the shot clock. We mentioned Roosevelt's last flirtation with the big dance as we get a catch and shoot off the inbound. Olivia Wren can't knock it down. Olsen gets the board, finds Zahara Bishop. Zahara averaging 15 per game this season. Tried to thread it inside, and a foul will be called on Roosevelt. Benel St. Margaret's, they've done all this without Kendall McGee. She won't be cleared to play until AAU season. You may recall she just about destroyed her knee in the state semifinals last year. Olivia Olson feasting on Roosevelt in the early going. She's got a quick seven. And Benel St. Margaret's up 10-2. They've got a lot of depth, athleticism, and teamwork on their side. I did a preview podcast with Eric Bugard of Junior All-Star and one of our colleagues, Pat Barrett, who you'll hear tomorrow in the Class A quarters. Roosevelt swinging around. They've got an open three. It rims out. That was Jada Walker. She and Wren hold just about all the school records at Roosevelt. Bishop squeezing through the hole. It's going to be a traveling call. Taisha Wright, extremely excited for this opportunity. When she was a player, you may recall Saria McGuire, perhaps the biggest name out of Roosevelt, 
works as a model now, played Division I basketball at Miami, if memory serves correctly. The pressure leads to another steal. No run out, though, for Presley Watkins. She came over from Orno this year. But Roosevelt couldn't get back there in time. But St. Margaret's will hang on to it on the side out. 15-14 left in the first half. And the Red Knights off to a ferocious start. 10-2 Olivia Olsen already with seven points. She dropped 40 in the section final victory over Delano last week. Looks to drop three more, but her three is long. Rebound ran. Roosevelt, we've got to see if they can get on the board here. Well, they'll get a chance to do so at the line as Olivia Wren draws the foul. Olivia Wren will be attending Kirkwood Community College to start her college career and hope it will serve as a springboard to a four-year institution later on. Kirkwood located in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Wren gets the front end to go on the season averaging 14.6 points per game 6.7 rebounds 4.7 assists Wren came close to a triple double in the semifinals against two rivers the section semifinals 29 points 11 re assists 9 rebounds It's 10-4 after Wren converts the freebies. Passing error on Bedell St. Margaret's. Friedley was looking for Olsen, but Olivia cut a little too far inside. A rare unforced error on the part of Bedell St. Margaret's, who have looked quite flawless over the last couple of years. Wren doubled. Olsen. Picks her pocket. She's got a lane, and you know what's coming next. Olivia Olsen with nine. I swear she hasn't missed a beat since that 40-point game in the 6-3A final against Delano, and that wasn't exactly a win you could shrug off. Here's a three from the corner. It's too strong. Dead ball rebound to Roosevelt. Olsen will take a breather. This might provide an opportunity for Roosevelt. I think Olsen's all right. I don't see anything. It is more of a preservation, stamina substitution than anything. But right now, Roosevelt's stuck on just one field goal while Benilde St. Margaret's came out flying and in the case of Olsen quite literally fresh 20 for the Teddies Wren blocked gets it back throws it up too strong that's Mira Wismer one of the many supporting cast members Naji looking for Bishop Wren swoops in for the steal able to corral it Oh, Tamara Bell lost track of where she was. She was a step or two outside the sideline. The dimensions can be a bit jarring, but Elton St. Margaret's no stranger to them. They've reached the state tournament three years running now, but they don't swap out courts for these quarterfinals. Spatial awareness, always crucial no matter the round. Bishop collecting the lob from Najee. The fadeaway, not there. And a foul was called on Benel St. Margaret's while pursuing the rebound. It will go against Najee, and Olsen will check back in. Josie Naji, the younger sister of Maya Naji, who opted to step away from college basketball to focus on her medical studies at Arizona. Roosevelt doubled again, and Sydney Fridley 
Swipes it. Olsen in stride. On the move. Released a little too early. Roosevelt doing a good job cutting her off. Now they have numbers. This is Bell. She's fouled by Friedley. And Tamara will go to the line to shoot two. Tamara Bell this season, 7.1 points per game. And 3.4 rebounds, but right now Roosevelt's still stuck on one field goal. It's a split for Bell, but pursuing the O-board was Jayla Bennett. side out for Roosevelt still waiting for the live stats to come up on screen but with 1255 left in the first half the story of the game the field goal shooting woes of Roosevelt they have just one field goal. And that swarming defensive posture, Benilde St. Margaret certainly doesn't help. Three is short as the shot clock was winding down. Wren controls the rebound. Around the screen set by Davis, wide open lane for the taking. And that is what Roosevelt needs, 12-7 again. Roosevelt playing Hunters. Benilde St. Margaret's the hunted. If you use that terminology or go along those lines, scramble for the ball. Bishop doesn't get the bounce. A foul was called on Roosevelt's Kiara Bell. Jada Walker will check back in. Watkins to Olsen. Olivia will shoot two. Olivia going to Michigan University next year where she presumably will join Taylor Woodson. And I say that because with the transfer rules, you never quite know. But I do know Olivia Olsen's future quite bright in basketball. As the front end falls for the senior and one of the most decorated athletes in the 2024 class. Five games with 30 points or more. And a plethora of all-star games await her after the season ends. She knocks down the freebies. It's 14-7. Olivia Olson, 11 of Benel St. Margaret's 14 points. Nice ball movement for Roosevelt, but Davis unable to get the touch. Watkins. Laces it inside to Kapsner for two. 16-7. Benel St. Margaret's pressing again. Davis gets it across. Ran to Davis. Deep three. It's there. Jayla Bennett. Makes it 16-10. Bishop pulls up. Still looking for her first field goal. She remains scoreless. And despite that hot start for Benel St. Margaret's, Roosevelt holding their own so far. And when you're the underdog, the longer you can hang around with the big wigs, the more confidence you can gain. But Benel St. Margaret's has a chance to go on the run again. Olsen missed the layup, but she had a trailer in Friedley for the recovery. Benilde St. Margaret's using that press defense to generate some fast break looks. Davis has an opening, goes for the runner, gets the friendly bounce. Watkins, outlet, 
Bishop, fade away, still scoreless. Wren is fouled, I believe that will go on Bishop. It will. Kevin Anderson, who has charted games for a mighty long time, ever since I started covering this sport at least, and then some, he'll often tell you the key for any championship team, can you survive a bad half? I'm not saying Benel St. Margaret's is in the danger zone, but everyone outside of Olsen having a tough time finding themselves here. And it is reminiscent somewhat of the quarterfinal round last year when De La Salle went up by 17, if I'm correct, against Benel St. Margaret's, but couldn't sustain that lead. De La Salle, the number two seed. Here's a deep three for Roosevelt that's short. That was Walker. Bishop has numbers and draws the foul, barreling into Jada Walker there. Wren and Tamara Bell will check in. Both teams with four fouls, 9.57 left in the first half. And Olsen will check out again. Watkins looking for an inbound target, finds Bishop. The junior relentless, but still scoreless. And remember, Benel St. Margaret's, they got to do this without Kendall McGee. She won't be cleared to play until AAU season. But we saw their resolve a year ago when they lost her in the semifinals and then held off Stewartville. Sierra Lumpkin, a big part of that. Six three-pointers in that game. Three ball, corner pocket. Tamara Bell with her first field goal, and it's now a three-point margin. Watkins cuts her way around the defense. Fridley for three, long. Rebound will go to Roosevelt. Roosevelt First ever state tournament appearance, and I mentioned the last time they had this flirtation back in 2009, 2010. That was a solid year for the Minneapolis City Conference. Minneapolis South won it all in 2009 in 4A. Minneapolis North won silver in 3A. And Roosevelt, no pushover either. Too far underneath, that was Kiara Bell. Naji tried to go in the spin cycle. It's Kapsner, the runner, it's there. Kay Kapsner giving Benel St. Margaret's a helping hand here. She's got seven. And Kapsner, one of the many who picked up some valuable experience. Watkins staying with Wren for the block and takeaway. Kapsner. Had the ball poked from her grip. Jump ball. Red Knights hold the arrow. 8.14 left in the first half. Olsen will check back in. Again, there are no media timeouts in the quarterfinals. That might be why you see Olivia taking a breather periodically. When you get to the semis and championship rounds, 45 TV will have live coverage of those. You do get media timeouts. That allows the starters to stay out there a little bit more. Olsen's fadeaway is short. And Roosevelt still hanging tough with the favorite in 3A. The one seed. Bennett on the wing. It's Wren thinking about it. Fires. In and out. Rebound Davis. Tries to go up with it and draws the foul on Naji. That will be the third for Josie.
And already a big development with 7.44 left in the first half. Naji, one of your primary bench players, she's going to have to ride the bench, I suspect, for the remainder of this half. That could be problematic for Benilde St. Margaret's as Katie Davis knocks down the front end. Katie, all-time leader in rebounds at Minneapolis Roosevelt, passed 1,000 points earlier this season. And she also likes gardening and cooking. Well, she can't cook up a second freebie there, but Josie Naji in big foul trouble here with three. She'll have to sit until the second half. And it's a four-point game. These two did not play each other. Oh, nice cut inside for Olsen. And I don't think this senior's playing around anymore. Olivia Olsen with 13. Bennett trying to maintain the dribble. A late foul was called. So Roosevelt will hang on to it. Olivia Olsen called for the blocking foul. Just the first for Olivia, but that is the last foul to give for Benilde St. Margaret's. Jasmine Armstrong got the inbound. Jayla Bennett will reset. Tamara Bell bounces over to Wren. Davis out of the wing, seven to shoot. Wren trying to work off a screen. Goes around and in again. That's the second time Olivia has taken the securitist path around the picket fence. 22-18. Tamara Bell with the poke. Olsen will try to get the stop, and she's hit with her second foul. Bell, one of the anchors to Roosevelt's defense, relentless in effort and determination. Taisha Wright says that sets the tone for the entire team. And Olsen now picks up her second. Bell knocks down the front end. Olsen will stay on the floor for now. Bell splits at the line. Twenty-two nineteen. One possession game. Back door, Bishop, she's on the board. Bell to Wren. Pulls up, tries to bank it. Unable to do so. And when you've got the lanky and athletic Olivia Olsen patrolling the paint, that can complicate things. Bishop with the offensive rebound after the miss from three-point range. Foul before. Olivia Olsen made the move inside. Roosevelt had two to give. Three A quarters will take place throughout the day. We'll have a pair of two A quarters here this evening. The other pair will take place at Williams Arena. Winner of this game will play at noon tomorrow, approximately. Bishop, back-to-back -back buckets for the junior. After a slow start, that could be the steadying anchor Benilde St. Margaret's needs as they seek to fend off what has been a spirited effort so far from Minneapolis Roosevelt going in. I don't think too many folks were thinking Roosevelt would hang around. This could be... The time where Benilde St. Margaret's drops the hammer and Olivia Olsen hammers a three-pointer. Benilde St. Margaret's will take a timeout, interestingly, even though they've scored on three straight possessions to build their lead up to 10, 29-19. And with this timeout, 
It's time to acknowledge our McDonald's Archway to Opportunity Student of the Week. It's Huey Trong from Lakeville North. The Panther Junior is busy these days when not going to school or working at McDonald's. Huey enjoys tutoring fellow students and working at his local food shelf. He is currently undecided on his future plans, but his drive to be his drive is to be the most successful he can be. Good luck, Huey. For job information, visit jobs.mckire.com and stay with us throughout the Winter State Tournaments to see if your student will be the McDonald's Archway to Opportunity Student of the Week. And Huey, I'm sure you have a bright future ahead of you no matter what school you decide. 5-10 left in the first half. Benilde St. Margaret's scoring on their last three possessions. Back-to-back -back buckets from Bishop and a three from Olsen. Olivia with 16 points. Gut check time here for Roosevelt, I suspect. The runner for Walker, too strong as it clanks off the heel. Friedley to Bishop, who will bring it up. Bishop out of the high post. Olsen was looking for it. Now she gets it on the cut, can't get the finish this time. Largest lead of the game for Benilde St. Margaret's and a tough drive leads to a tough finish for Olivia Wren. Olivia doing all she can to keep Roosevelt in this one. There's Jayla Bennett, one of the defensive leaders who got the poke and drew the foul, so we'll have free throws here with Roosevelt in the bonus. That's the second on Bishop. Jayla Bennett, high marks in GPA and high marks in basketball. Gets the front end to go. 8.3 points per game. Two and a half rebounds. 2.3 steals. Gets both, 29-23. Olsen with 16 points for Benilde St. Margaret's. Wren leading Roosevelt with 10. Watkins to Kapsner, over to Olsen. Olivia can do just about everything for this team. That's what makes her so tough to defend, so tough to contain, as many teams have found out since her return. Eight to shoot, Olsen. missed and I was watching that scramble to see where it would go and it will go to Roosevelt. Winner of this game will play the winner of the Stewartville St. Peter game that will take place at approximately noon or 25 minutes after the conclusion of this game whichever comes first. Bennett to Wren, draws the double. Bennett got a bit of a bump from Watkins. Wren sees the clock, seven to shoot. Moves in and scores again on the take. Last couple of times she did so going right. This time she pulls off the move going left. 12 points for the all-time leading score at Minneapolis Roosevelt. 29-25, Roosevelt, they've scored six in a row. Watkins, Kapsner had an opening. Cuts inside and missed the baseline J. Outlet, Bennett collects. A little too much though, released too early. I think she needed another step. And Roosevelt will take a timeout to get themselves out of a jam. 2.30 left in the first half, 29-25, but Elm St. Margaret's up by four. I'm the Twin Cities. One life skill I learned is how to be a leader. 
When I first started working here, I was just a regular crew, and throughout the years, I became a manager, so now I get to teach the crew the correct way, and then it also makes the customers happy. One of my interests outside of school is going racing. It's just fun because we all work as a team, and it's similar to work, just because if we don't work as a team, we're not going to get the job done. For job information, text APPLY to 38000 or visit jobs.mchire.com. Wren and Davis, they've been with Roosevelt since 8th grade. Jada Walker has been a part of the program since 7th grade. They beat Como Park in a third and thrilling final round between those two. They played in the regular season Twin Cities game, and Roosevelt edged Como Park by the skin of their teeth. 50-49, you cannot get any closer than that. Section 3-3A wasn't seen as a strong section, though, so to see Roosevelt stick around and not back down, that could give them a boost here, but we still have 2-12 left, 7 to shoot, and Roosevelt in a jam. Here comes Wren. Her drive was disrupted. Roosevelt will have two seconds left on the shot clock. And at the state tournament, every stretch, every play is key, but this is a noteworthy sequence here as Roosevelt doesn't want to give up a lot of momentum. Here's a three. It looks off, and that will be a shot clock violation. Tamara Bell missed the mark. Twenty-nine, twenty-five. Olson pulls up. That jumper, one of the smoothest you'll see. Thirty-one, twenty-five. And this is what I was talking about. You don't want to concede a run if you're Roosevelt and give up the momentum, the confidence, the swagger that you've been working extremely hard to attain. That bounce pass went into heavy traffic. Not much Jayla Bennett could do with it. Olsen, the dish, extra pass. Mira Wismer lost her grip. Roosevelt gets it on the possession arrow. Bella stevenson Shimmick will check in for Olsen. That might be a defensive substitution for Tim Ellison, ensuring that his top player doesn't pick up foul number three before intermission. Bennett to Wren. Tamara Bell through the hole and in. <laughs> Collided hard with that Upright, whatever you call that thing. Olsen, no, that's not Olsen. She's on the bench. That was Watkins. Her drive was stopped. Three on the way for Bell. That would have been big for Roosevelt. Watkins gets the rebound in stride. Benel St. Margaret's with a two-on-two. -two. Watkins through the defense and lays it in. Shot clock off. Roosevelt could hold if they wish. Bennett. Over to Wren. 15 seconds. You see the time, now 10. Wren, is she going to take it herself? Five seconds, can't get through. Coughs it up. Will Benelt St. Margaret's have time? No. Sydney Fridley just a second or two late. But Benelt St. Margaret's does hold a 33-27 lead over Minneapolis Roosevelt as we enter halftime. Olivia Olson, a fantastic first half. Olivia Wren, equally impressive. But does Roosevelt have enough to make a run and get in front? 
They've been able to get it within a possession once or twice. We'll find out as we take a break. We'll be back in about 10 minutes for first half stats and analysis. You're watching the Class 3A State Girls Basketball Quarterfinals live on NSBN. Benel St. Margaret's leads Minneapolis Roosevelt 33-27. brought me out of my shell because I was kind of quiet before. didn't really want to go out of my way to talk to people. Yeah, there's four because it's a multi-order. And here you kind of have to do that. And that'll help me in an elementary classroom because I'll have to visit with not only the kids, but I'll have to talk to their parents and other teachers. For job information, text APPLY to 38000 or visit jobs.mchire.com. Star Tribune covers high school sports as passionately as you live them. Don't miss a beat on the games you love. Check out Star Tribune all day, every day for the latest prep news, scores, and so much more. Local sports coverage can be found on NSPN.TV all year long. From the first crack at the bat in August to the final putt in June. And that is good for the individual championship. We are there. Subscribe to the Neighborhood Sports Network to watch events both live and on demand, including state tournament coverage in every sport. Email jobs at nspn.tv if you'd like to join our team of broadcasters and camera operators. Welcome to the neighborhood. Hey, boss. Okay. I said I'm fine.
Mike Beaton with you. And second half will begin in just a few moments. Live on NSPN, we're at the Maturi Pavilion for the Class 3A Girls Basketball State Quarterfinals. Benilde St. Margaret's leads Roosevelt 33-27. Benilde St. Margaret's led by as much as 10. But Minneapolis Roosevelt so far has answered every challenge. What they have yet to do is take the lead. They got off to a slow start from the floor. And while they were able to bounce back enough to get within a possession once or twice, Benilde St. Margaret's has held them off. And sometimes to win state, that's what you got to do. Entering this game, the expectation was Benilde St. Margaret's would take this one handily with Roosevelt coming out of a weak section, 3-3-A, and Benilde St. Margaret's being one of the top teams around. Olivia Wren leads Minneapolis Roosevelt with 12 points, and Olivia Olson has led the way for Benilde St. Margaret's if there's a school record, Olivia Olson owns it. Points, rebounds, assists, steals. There's a reason I call her one of the unicorns that you'll see today. You'll see several others in our two-way quarterfinals later tonight with Addie Mack, Madden Greenway, and Tori Orline. All three of them in two-A, and Orline, Greenway, and Mack in that order, your top scores this season. And Willow Thiel from Perham, also in the top 10, she'll be taking part as well. Olsen with 18 points in the first half. We'll see what she can cook up in the second half as we get underway here. Winner will play the winner of Stewartville St. Peter later this afternoon. Olivia Olsen's runner too strong. Wren looking to go outlet. She's got Tamara Bell. Too strong again. These are the plays you want to make sure you capitalize on. Bridley for three. It sails left. Again, Roosevelt the underdog here. So if you want to make sure you take advantage of those short-range looks, those fast-break opportunities. And what you can't do is cough up the ball. Benelt St. Margaret's, no stranger to the state tournament third straight year they have qualified they were knocked out in the first round two years ago that was the first year of Olsen and McGee won it all last year without McGee in the championship and are trying to repeat the last team to win repeat titles in 3A was Park Center Bishop pulls up Gets the roll. Bishop had a slow start. Now she's up to six. Shouldered the load. Stepping into the three. Bullseye. Jayla Bennett has come up with some big buckets here. You don't necessarily think of Bennett as the X factor for Roosevelt. Usually it's Wren or Walker, but it's the state tournament. Leave nothing behind. Bishop to inbound. With 16, 17 left in the second half. There's your Metro West player of the year, Olivia Olson. Again, will play in three. All-star events, Fridley for three. It's long. Wren collects the rebound. Wren, one of those many unsung heroes, hidden gems, as she banks in the turnaround Jay. One possession game again, 35-32. Olsen. Pulls up on the coast-to-coast -coast dribble drive, and she'll shoot two. If you just joined us, Olsen, she'll be playing at the Nike Hoops USA Summit, the McDonald's All-American game, the Jordan brand classic, and likely one of two candidates 
who have a legitimate chance of winning Miss Basketball. The full list of finalists will come out next week. But it's going to come down to one of the two Olivias. Olivia Olson or Olivia McGill. Olson, no trouble making those freebies. She's up to 20. By the way, if you're following along, we have the Class 4A quarterfinals going on as we speak, live on NSPN, and Hopkins up big on White Bear Lake. Bennett to Walker, back to Bennett. Walker was thinking about a three, comes in from the elbow, missed the runner. Olsen completes the transition play with the outlet bucket. 22 for the one woman wonder. Wren kicks out, touch three, too strong, rebound Friedley. Looks to go outlet again, this time it's Bishop who takes it in. Bishop with eight. Could this be the run that gives Benelt St. Margaret's the breathing room they need? Another unforced error on Roosevelt coughing it up on the errant pass. One thing about this year's state tournament, which hasn't always been the case, if who we think gets through does, all four classes should have some epic semifinals, and that's another epic move inside for Olivia Olson. Largest lead of the game for Benelde St. Margaret's. As they appear to be mashing the accelerator now. Benelde St. Margaret's zoning up it looks like. And once again another Aaron pass. Hands the ball back to BSM. They lead 43-32. We mentioned that win streak. 21 games, including St. Michael Auberville, Stewartville. Olson goes behind to Bishop for two more. Bishop with 10, overcoming a slow start. Bishop tips the pass, keeps it in bounds. It's a free run to the bucket for Benelt St. Margaret's. And a free pair for Olivia Olson. She's got 26. Benelt St. Margaret's setting course for the semifinals and hoping to do so at warp speed. 12.57 left in the second half. We'll be back in a moment. Star Tribune covers high school sports as passionately as you live them. Don't miss a beat on the games you love. Check out Star Tribune all day, every day for the latest prep news, scores, and so much more. A reminder that you can follow us on social media for highlights and programming information at NSPN Minnesota. On all major social media platforms, NSPN is your home for the Minnesota State Tournaments. Every event not seen on 45 TV can be found right here. That win streak again for Benilde St. Margaret's. I think the victories over Jordan and St. Michael Aberville helped them get the one seed. There were some questions on how the seeding would play out since they lost to Alexandria and De La Salle. But those games, Eden Prairie as well, all of them were without Olivia Olson. And again, I think that STMA win was enough to get them into the one seed position. 
They could hold their own without Olsen against some of the lower-level teams, but struggled to keep up with the high-caliber ones, of course, next year. That will be the case as the drive by Tamara Bell is too strong. That will be the case. However, Kendall McGee should come back, and if she is able to retain that explosive speed and agility of hers, the Mount St. Margaret's could be on the short list again. Olivia Olsen knocking down buckets and taking names. Bishop slow to get up. Officials will stop play. Bishop appears to be all right, but may need a moment or two to collect herself. Roosevelt got within three. Since then, a 14-0 run for Benilde St. Margaret's, and Olivia Olson already has 10 points in that run. Closing in on what would be her sixth 30-point game this season. Ran the bounce pass a little too strong. Roosevelt has it on the arrow. And a reminder that whatever happens, Every team you see today will get at least one more game guaranteed. The winner moves on to the semifinals. 45 TV will have live coverage of that round Thursday at noon. Side fade, three. Bounces off the heel. Another rebound for Olsen. The loser will move on to the consolation bracket and play at Gingelhoff Center starting tomorrow. And SPM will have live coverage of the consolation and bronze medal games. Extra pass from Olsen to Wismer. What a beauty. What a find. And what a showcase of flexibility. It's not just the scoring that makes Olivia Olsen such a brilliant figure for Benilde St. Margaret. She does everything. Three from the corner, too strong. A 16-0 run, and Benel St. Margaret's has a chance to extend it. On that last possession, I'm still mesmerized. Olsen could have gone up, but applied her vision, her awareness. Olivia Olsen, she's been playing varsity ball since eighth grade, and if you... Look back on that trajectory, what a rise and what a journey it has been for Olsen. Those first couple of years, it was pretty much just Olivia. The driving kick to Najee for three. Short. Roosevelt will let it bounce out of bounds. Kendall McGee came over from Breck, and there were some questions on how well the two would mesh together and I'd say over the last couple of years, that question has been answered in the affirmative. Wren on the drive, fouled, she'll shoot two. Bishop hit with her fourth personal foul, but... Benilde St. Margaret's on a monstrous run here. Olivia Rem will try to right the ship. She and Jada Walker both scored 1,000 points in the same game last season. And when you look at what those two have accomplished together, it might get lost in the sauce with all of the attention this year going to Benilde St. Margaret's. De La Salle with a strong season. Benilde St. Margaret's on the run again. Najee, too soft on the layup. Traveling violation called against Wren, and that is a microcosm of how this second half has gone for the Teddies. Watkins. Bishop to Olsen, the touch three. Bullseye. Olivia Olsen 
31 points. And when you look back on her return from that broken hand, which she suffered in the first game of the season against Providence, she scored 30 against Jordan in her comeback game. On a night where she crossed 2,000 points. Apropos that she starts the state tournament run with a 30-point game. Five to shoot. Wren launches the three. It's short. Rebound Najee. But with 9.45 left, I think Benilde St. Margaret's has this one under control. Bishop. Again. Zahara Bishop checking Roosevelt with impunity. Watkins pries the ball away. Look who's got it. Olsen, count it. Olivia Olsen earning her sixth 30-point game this season. The guiding presence in the first half when Benilde St. Margaret's found themselves in a surprisingly tight tilt. And guiding them to a runaway win here in the second half. 59-32. If my math is correct, the run is now 24 to nothing. Roosevelt loses the ball again as Tamara Bell can't keep it in play. And a reminder, the path isn't finished yet. Benilde St. Margaret's, who I think will move on to the semifinals. They will await Stuart Bell or St. Peter. That game will come up next. Roosevelt, they'll go to the consolation bracket. Every team gets at least two games. Another double team, another steal. Olsen to Friedley. She's hacked by Kiara Bell and Friedley colliding with that stanchion. A lot of these players are used to tight spaces but typically, it's padding, not a stanchion that you run into. And you can leave a mark. Friedley knocks down the front end, but the quickness of Benel St. Margaret's to turn what was a three point game into a runaway win speaks volumes to the depth of talent they have on their roster and in that preview podcast as Friedley spit, splits. Pat Barron noted this with Benilde St. Margaret's over the last couple of years since Tim Ellison took the reins. You see a lot of teamwork, a lot of camaraderie. Olsen, the steal, one-on-one. -on -one. Can't hang on to it this time. It was that shared trust that helped them defeat Stewartville in the Class 3A final. When they were shorthanded. And that bond has aided them this season as they are still technically shorthanded. Kendall McGee wasn't cleared to play this season. Foul on Watkins and I've gotten to know some of the BSM parents and community members, I have quite a few chats with the McGee family, and they never took the approach of rushing her back. They wanted Kendall to take her time and make sure she was ready to go rather than rush her back too soon and exacerbate what was a pretty serious injury last year. Three ball, short for Roosevelt. Davis with the rebound, flips it up, and will shoot two. Davis will play Division Three basketball next year, not too far away, at McAllister. 
located in the Mayak. Davis was also captain of the girls' soccer team, a member of the math team, and Dare to be Real, an anti-racist student leadership group. When you look at the resume that Katie has put together as an athlete and as a student, I'd say, oh, look out, Olsen. Took a tumble. That game where she suffered a broken hand, it happened about four minutes into the game with Providence Academy, and she stayed for the rest of the first half. And then had it looked at by the trainer who said, you've got to go to the hospital, get it checked out. She missed the entire month of December as a result. We've got a foul on Roosevelt. A 25-0 run for Benilde St. Margaret's after Roosevelt got within three. Bishop has an opening, moves in. Well, you can't hit them all, I guess. But she responded nicely after that brutally cold start. She's got 12, and she will be one of the many faces to watch in the semifinals tomorrow. Walker, I should say Wren drew the foul. She'll shoot two. And Bishop hit with a third personal foul. Wren held the two points in the second half. And that finally ends the scoring drop for Roosevelt, but I don't think there's going to be enough time. 7.23 left and 27 points. That is an awfully big hill to climb. Red knocks down both free throws. Taisha Wright calls timeout. Benilde St. Margaret's paving a path to the semifinals. We're back in a moment. McDonald's in the Twin Cities. One life skill I learned is how to be a leader. When I first started working here, I was just a regular crew, and throughout the years, I've become a manager, so now I get to teach the crew the correct way, and then also makes the customers happy. One of my interests outside of school is going racing. It's just fun because we all work as a team, and it's similar to work, just because if we don't work as a team, we're not going to get the job done. For job information, text APPLY to 38000 or visit jobs.mchire.com. 7.23 left. It looks like our first pair of semifinalists have been set. Hopkins up big on White Bear Lake. Not much of a surprise there. And Bedell St. Margaret's needed a half, but like we said, sometimes it's surviving a bad half as Bishop hands off, or gets the handoff from Olsen and knocks down the corner three. Exemplifying a sensational second half. Deep three, a little too deep. But Kiara Bell moves in for the offensive rebound. Wren will go back to the line. And to finish up the point I was making about surviving a bad half before Olsen added another assist in what has been another illustrious game for the senior, sometimes that bad half doesn't mean you find yourself trailing like Benel St. Margaret's did against De La Salle in the quarterfinals. Sometimes it means weathering the best shot from an opponent. It was only a six-point game at the half, and Roosevelt got within three points before Benilde St. Margaret's exploded. Every team will run into turbulence, headwinds, obstacles. And that's a given. But if you can survive that bad half, that bad stretch, as Benilde St. Margaret's did to turn a close game into a runaway, 
That speaks highly to the fortitude. The discipline, the hardened mentality of this team. There were some questions entering this season knowing that McGee could possibly be out for the whole year. Who would take the reins and aid Olsen? Bishop doing so today. Kapsner has had a few solid games this season. As Olsen goes across, won't add two more. But whatever happens, she will be the most decorated player in Bedell St. Margaret's girls basketball history. Free throws coming for Jada Walker. And a reminder that at approximately noon, we'll have the second of our 3A quarterfinals between Stewartville and St. Peter, a rematch from a regular season meeting. Stewartville back in the show after finishing second last year, their first ever appearance. This is Jada Walker. The all-time leader in three-point field goals and second in school history in career steals behind Olivia Wren. And even though this quarterfinal will go out like a lamb for Roosevelt, Bishop for three, swish. Benel St. Margaret's coming in like a lion. Bishop with 18. An impressive response after some harsh difficulties early on. Olsen, drive and kick, three ball. That won't go in for Kapsner. But a fresh 20 for the Red Knights. Kapsner thought about it. Hands it off to Bishop for three. That's long. Another long carom. Friedley got a hand on it, but it squirts out to Najee, who throws it into the abyss. But that's a turnover you can live with, with the win in hand. And for Roosevelt, even though they lost steam in the second half, for the seniors, Davis, Wren, and Jada Walker. They'll forever hold a piece of history. The first team to ever qualify for the state tournament in girls basketball, a program that was overshadowed somewhat even in the glory years of Saria McGuire and a lot of that had to do with what was going on with South and North in those years. It's Friedley pulls up from the elbow and will shoot two. Sydney Friedley averaging 11 a game. The 5'9 freshman, she and Saylor have been a part of this program for some time. They're both twins, if you're wondering, and Friedley also on the volleyball team. She'll add uh, a couple more points as we are now in stat padding time with 4.49 to go. A 25 nothing run after Roosevelt got within three was the turning point that secured this game for Benel St. Margaret's. Anytime you got to go up against a one, it's always a tough task, even though six, seven, and eight is unseated. That might change next year with volleyball and football going one through eight. Ran the turnaround, not there. The expectation is winter sports could follow suit. Olsen will go to the line for a one and one. 
Roosevelt fans not pleased about the call. And that's because that is the fifth personal foul for Olivia Wren. She had a great first half. Couldn't carry it over to the second frame, though, the way this Olivia has. But Wren, she'll have at least one more game, and then she will build up her credentials at Kirkwood next year as Olsen splits at the line. If you watch our coverage regularly, we covered the Region 13 NJCAA tournaments where a lot of familiar names on the prep circuit go. Iowa hotbed for Minnesota players on the JUCO circuit. Players that either were latecomers or maybe didn't get the offers they wanted. Olivia Wren, her day is done, but not her tournament. And Olivia Olsen has checked out as well. I think she'll be done for the day. 35 points, not too shabby. Her sixth 30 point game this season. Benilde St. Margaret's answering the challenge in the second half with that 25 0 run to turn a three point game into a blowout victory. One that. they hope is a precursor to something they have never achieved, and that is back-to-back -back state tournament titles. At the start of the game, we noted the difficulties that greet the one seed in Class 3A, the lowest winning percentage of all four classes since seeding began, as Friedley missing the front end of a 1-1 gives the ball back to Roosevelt. That win percentage, 3-13. And that will be a bucket for Jayla Bennett. That puts her up to 10. We're not at the mercy rule threshold. It's 35 or more, in case you're wondering. So Bennett will have a chance for a three-point play. It doesn't work out. Walker, the rebound, and the finish. That is the first field goal for Jada Walker. And Benilde St. Margaret's, their ability to neutralize her, I think a big reason why they are going to win by a bunch. Ten-second call. As Wismer had a hard time controlling the dribble. Wren, by the way, will finish with 17 points in the quarterfinals. But again, her season not done yet. She'll have... A shot in the consolation round tomorrow where she'll take on the loser of our next game, Stewartville and St. Peter. Olivia Olson, 35 points. Zahara Bishop with 18. And if you plan on watching the semifinals tomorrow on 45 TV, I would expect Olson and Bishop to carry the load once more. Those two have paired up splendidly. As the deep players are now coming in, Ashley Scram and Bella Yacoub to close out this one with 3.02 left. Benelt St. Margaret's, they've had a few highs and lows in between their state tournament championship runs. 2006. You may remember that team, Kasheen Alexander, Latoya Williams were a part of that crew. Kasheen later becoming a terrific player for Iowa. As Wismer stays with it, she'll have a chance for three. Averaging six points per game this season. Benilde St. Margaret's would win another title in 2010, knocking off Hill Murray that year. And I think most of you still hold fond memories.
if you're a BSN fan of the performance they exhibited against Stewartville. In particular, Sierra Lumpkin, who opted not to continue playing basketball, gave it a go at LMU and decided to focus on other avenues. But after that run, I had a chance to chat with Sierra Lumpkin. And she noted how Kendall McGee, who was down and out, this was after she suffered the injury, offered a word of encouragement to the outgoing senior. I suspect Kendall has relayed her fair share of encouraging words to this year's team as more players check in. We'll try to get them all for you here. Zeta Jenkins is out there. Ada Parker. Going up for the layup was Bella Yacoub. Or the runner, and it didn't land. Eight to shoot. This is Parker, and she walked. And Stevenson Schimmick also out there for Roosevelt. Shasara works. On the floor, George 11, Jay Lang, Kiara Bell, and Olive Molly. They'll close it out in all likelihood. Roosevelt gave it their best shot, but couldn't sustain it. Here's a steal and run out. And that draws a thunderous applause for Ada Parker, the 5'5 freshman. Always an exciting moment when those deep reserves get a chance to enter their name into the box score. In the old days, we'd say that will get you on the paper the next day. Baseline jumper, short, rebound too strong. That was Kiara Bell. And on the Roosevelt side, a lot of players with high GPAs. Katie Davis at 3-9, Jada Walker at 3-9. Mally and Jayla Bennett, those two are always cracking jokes, keeping the mood light, and I have a feeling they'll have a few more, even though Roosevelt came up short today. More free throws coming. Taisha Wright said the girls, this Roosevelt team, walking in the shoes that she always wanted to be in as a player. And for Benel St. Margaret's, hoping to extend their legacy. Send out Olivia Olson with one more accolade. She already has a state championship in girls soccer. She was the starting goalkeeper. At the line is Bella Yacoub for Benel St. Margaret. She'll get a couple of points here. And with that, we're at the 35 point mark, so that will put us at running time with 1.33 to go. A 25 nothing run to turn a three point lead into an enormous 28-point advantage. That was the finishing blow for Benel St. Margaret's, the one seed. To pull away from Roosevelt. And even though history isn't on the side of Benel St. Margaret's in terms of seeding, remember, a 313 win percentage for the one seed in 3A since seeding began 17 years ago. Those are just numbers. What matters most is what you do. And with Olivia Olson and Bishop, I'd say Benilde St. Margaret's has a good chance. I tab them as the favorite to win it all in Class 3A because of how strong that front line is. But only time will tell. I know this much, Benilde St. Margaret's has another date in the semifinals. A second half surge 
catapults them to a huge win. 35 for Olivia Olsen. 18 for Bishop. That's it. That's all. 75-40. Bedell St. Margaret's advances to the Class 3A semifinals. They will await the winner of our next game, Stewartville and St. Peter. And those who only look at the box score might say it was another methodical, easy win. It took them some doing in that second half. But I think that second half performance is a reminder to whoever faces them. They'll be ready for a challenge. Remember, one of their wins this year came against St. Michael Aberville, who's in the show in Class 4A. And if you want to watch them in the semifinals, 45 TV will have live coverage tomorrow at noon. Williams Arena will host. For Minneapolis Roosevelt, they move to the consolation bracket. NSPM will have live coverage of that round starting tomorrow at the Gingelhoff Center, Concordia University. With that, we'll take a short break and return in about 25 minutes for Stewartville and St. Peter as Bedell St. Margaret celebrates a runaway 75-40 win over Minneapolis Roosevelt. And we'd like to thank all of you for watching this edition of the State Girls Basketball Tournament Quarterfinals. Once again, we'll see you in about 25 minutes for Stewartville and St. Peter as our live coverage of the Class 3A Girls Basketball State Tournament continues on NSPN. NSPN.TV, in partnership with the Minnesota State High School League, brings you live coverage of the 2024 State Basketball Tournament. Coverage is brought to you in part by your local McDonald's owners and operators, offering competitive wages, paid time off, and tuition assistance. And by the Star Tribune, your home for the best prep coverage. Now let's go live to the gym for State Basketball on NSPN.TV.